Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. What's at the bottom of the deepest hole on Earth? Ever wondered what lies in the deepest hole on Earth, or rather, have you ever wondered what lies at the bottom of the Earth? Just so we're clear, this might just be a long history lesson. No, wait, seriously, there's a lot of information here that will blow your mind. Stick around until the end to uncover mysteries they don't want you to know. We promise there's nothing boring about this enthralling deep dive into the history of the Kola Super Deep Borehole. Some of you might have already heard of the Kola Super Deep Borehole, which is the deepest artificial point on Earth since 1989. This massively deep hole was a result of a drilling project of the Soviet Union in the Pajensky District on the Kola Peninsula, hence its name. During the Cold War era, America was in a space race with the USSR, a well-documented fact. What if you know, however, is that a seemingly weird and low-key race was actually also taking place between the greatest drillers of the US and the USSR. The Kola Super Deep Borehole was a result of this. It became the Soviet Union's stab at exploring the depths of the Earth's crust in the 1970s. Digging, or rather boring, began on the Kola Peninsula in Russia in 1971. Just eight years later, the project had shattered all other world records for the deepest drilling project by dethroning the Bertha Rogers Hole in Oklahoma, which dipped to a whopping 9,583 meters. True to the Russian spirit, they kept going. By 1983, they had reached an incredible depth of 12 kilometers. As you would have thought, Russian engineers were ecstatic and seemingly decided it would be a great idea to take some time off. During the break, prominent personalities including scientists and political figures from across the globe made stopovers to the site. Sadly, the site's gear was ultimately left to rot. Drilling began the subsequent year. It was quickly thwarted by a 5km section of the drill string getting completely sheared off. This meant that they had to start afresh after abandoning the previous drill string. The project started a new drilling project a 7 kilometers depth down the existing hole. This delayed digging for another 5 years, but in 1989 they finally got to their preceding 12 kilometer mark. Drilling was later stopped due to some serious technical glitches, one of them being temperature. At the drill head, they were in extra of 180 degrees Celsius, which, at that time, was too challenging to deal with. Whereas the team had anticipated reaching 13.5 kilometers by 1990 and 15 kilometers by 1993, they had no option but to stop the task in 1992. The plan with this project was to attempt to drill as deep as possible into the Earth's crust to discover what lies in the great unknown. They do say, after all, that our knowledge of the galaxies is immense compared to what we know about what lies beneath us. Most importantly, they just wanted to find out if they could do it. Very Russian, if you ask me. Now, despite the fact that all that remains of this prestigious achievement are ruins and a soldered shut cover plate, they did find some very interesting things down there, and we use interesting here very cautiously, because honestly, some were very interesting. Let's take a look at what they found down there. A Smithsonian article was quoted saying that what might have seemed like a fool's errand at the time potentially could have found some serious scientific treasure. Now, earlier in the drilling, they expected that there would be a granite basalt border at around 7 kilometers deep. Much to their surprise, what they discovered was something else completely. What they happened upon was a highly fractured area that was completely saturated with water. This was highly unusual, particularly at such a distance. There's a ton of water down there. They found piping hot, mineralized water almost all over along the drill path. Initially, the expectation was that the granite would be as dry as a bone. Seems the old adage was wrong. Who's to say you can't get water from a rock? The second and probably most mind-blowing indication of what a groundbreaking, no pun intended, project this really was, is the fact that in order to bore miles into the ground, the engineers had to invent a whole new drill. 
Initially, what would happen was the drillers would quickly spin the complete drill system so that the bit at the bottommost part could eat away at the bedrock. Before beginning, the Soviets intended that the tubing would weigh up to over a million pounds. The problem was that they could never create sufficient spin to rotate that much piping quickly enough to drill through miles and miles of granite. So then, the brilliant Soviets in 1969 developed a revolving bit. It worked by sending mud that was pressurized through the pipe down to the bit, where it was blown through a turbine at the drill head. The bit span at an amazing 80 revolutions per minute. The new system worked so well that it's up to this day still used on oil wells. Another unpredicted finding was a vast amount of hydrogen gas. And sure, you might say that naturally the Earth has gas, but how do you explain mud that flowed out of the hole being referred to as boiling with hydrogen? Unexpected deposits of helium, nitrogen, and even carbon dioxide, most likely from microbes, were also found all along the borehole. Also, it turns out there is no basalt underneath the continent's granite. This was an enormous shock. Seismic tests had earlier suggested that at approximately 9,000 meters, the granite would give way to basalt. The seismic irregularity proposing basalt was actually caused by metamorphosized granite instead. This gave support for plate tectonics theory, which was pretty new when the Kola Superdeep borehole was being bored. While there are no ancient concealed beasts slithering up from the abyss to attack the drilling team, at least none that we know of, scientists did make some inexplicable findings. They unearthed two dozen diverse types of petrified microbes over four miles down, likely to be around 2.5 billion years old. They also found proof of tiny planktonic fossils at depths around 6 kilometers. These are fossils that were buried in granite over 6,700 meters below the surface. How's that even possible? You'll be glad to know that hell is actually deeper than 12,262 meters below the surface. There's a stubborn tale that the drilling ceased in 1992 because scientists had reportedly pierced a super hot cavity and heard screams of damned souls. This, in all reality, is highly unlikely. Now, while it's easy to see how Kola could have inadvertently encouraged some offbeat religious delusions about what lies below us, this particular rumor is honestly a bit far-fetched. There are still loads of people in the world who hold on to the beliefs that there is an actual literal hell within Earth. Understandably, some of these people were delighted when they found out, from a fundamentalist group, mind you, that the well had to be sealed because the evil Russian scientists had touched the ceiling of hell. The claim was that during the drilling, the well hit a seemingly hollowed rock and extremely hot temperatures. Scientists then proceeded to lower down an extremely heat-resistant microphone down the borehole and allegedly heard the tormented cries of millions of scorching souls. In, In what can only be considered the greatest plot twist of all time, many of the scientists actually went and almost instantly repented and joined the very same fundamentalist movement. Others bolted from the site and went crazy. You know as it's to be expected of anyone who refuses to ask forgiveness and submit their lives even after hearing the squeals of souls of the dead. For that, they would probably definitely have had to touch the mantle. It would be impossible to keep a story this extraordinary in a Finnish village. The largest Christian broadcasting coincidentally in America, called Trinity Broadcasting Network, spread it like hot dung and their audiences gobbled it up. The claim was that the whole was evidence of the literal presence of hell. After this propagandist airing, Trinity Broadcast then went on to up the ante. They followed this up with more material delivered by a hoaxer. It was a sparsely factual hoax that Trinity could very easily fact check. In what can only be described as on-brand Christian fashion, about 2,000 people were led to redemption when they heard the network's broadcasts about the cries from hell. So, silver lining, I guess? To this day, there are still plenty of people who are persuaded that it was Satan that was the reason the drilling stopped. 
The hot piece of news was apparently first printed in 1990 by a Finnish newspaper, Amenusostia, which was published by a group of Pentecostal Christians from Lavazowski, Finland. Talk about putting yourself on the map. Now, to be fair, a microphone was actually lowered into a giant hole by Lot Given, so maybe those guys were onto something. Lot had always wondered about what kind of sound the Earth would make. Lot had always wondered about what kind of sound the Earth would make. In her project, The Sound of the Earth, the Netherlands-based artist finally got her answer. Given joined geologists and engineers to record the sound of a 30,000-foot hole located in the hills of Germany. Not quite the same depth or even close, but still pretty impressive. At its deepest point, the hole reaches a sweltering 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Given's fascination with holes began all the way in her childhood. When she initially began studying super deep holes, she stumbled upon the well-known Kola borehole. But as it turns out, the Kola hole, in addition to literally being bolted shut in 2005, had also been to a degree filled with concrete. So she carried on her search for the perfect hole until she happened upon the perfect one in Germany. She got in touch with the German Research Center for Geosciences inquiring about their hole, and then the venture began. Initially, she got a very straightforward and slightly disappointing response to the question, what does the Earth sound like. Lot was flat out told that it was going to be completely silent down there. The plan was to lower a microphone to the deepest point which was a blistering 500 degrees Fahrenheit, a temperature at which regular electronics would inevitably melt like plastic in fire. As a replacement for this, they used recordings from a geophone, a device that's used to take readings of ground movement and an ultrasonic sensor that records sound waves out of range to human hearing. The findings were then interpreted into audio by dedicated software. Now here comes the fun part. The first time Gavin listened to the sound with proper headphones, she was overcome by what she heard. She says all the hair on her arms stood up on ends and even now after hearing it many times, she still gets the same feeling. The sound still has the same effect on her. She describes the sound as a reverberating thunder or the looming growl of a tornado tearing from end to end through the sky. One might ask, what would happen if you fell through the hole? Well, to put it simply, when you're literally at rock bottom, reevaluating your life choices, things would get warm really fast to say the least. Not to mention the air pressure you'd be dealing with, equal to 54 elephants balanced on top of your head at a whopping 378 tons. At least you'd be the first to journey to the center of the Earth. You might also ask, what was all the fuss? Why not just drill under the ocean? It's, after all, closer to the Earth's core. That's an excellent question with a simple answer. Scientists are doing just that. There's an excavation at the Atlantis bank of the Indian Ocean. There's a portion of oceanic crust that's chillier than normal in that area, which will make things easier for engineers. Maybe we'll finally get to hear what hell really sounds like.